Welcome to this introductory grounding transform slideshow presentation presented by Pacific Arts Transformers of Medford, Oregon. So what is a grounding transformer? As the name implies, it's used to provide a ground path on either an ungrounded Y or a delta connected system. Furthermore, the relatively low impedance path to ground maintains the system neutral at ground potential during fault events. A second function for grounding transformers is it supports the voltage on unfaulted phase during fault events. If a single line to ground fault occurs on an ungrounded or isolated system, no return path exists for the current to flow. The system will continue to operate, but the other two unfaulted lines will rise in voltage by the square root of 3. This overstresses the transformer insulation of the components by nearly 200%. This grounding transformer provides a current path to prevent this. A third function of ground transformers provides a metering point to measure faults. Since all ground faults all flow back through the neutral to the system, it's a convenient place to place a CT to monitor these faults for system protection. So where are these ground transformers used? A typical example is a wind farm. They utilize ground transformers for fault protection on ungrounded lines. When a ground fault occurs on a collector cable, this causes a substation circuit breaker to open. The wind turbine string then becomes isolated from ground. The turbines do not always detect the fault and generators continue to energize the cable, driving the fault even further. Voltages between the unfaulted cable and the ground rise by root 3. The transformers placed in the system on the turbine string helps provide a ground path once the main circuit breaker is open. This is a typical wind farm schematic illustrating the grounding transformer application. When the feeder breaker opens, the collector bus and the step-up transformers, delta-connected medium voltage windings, all rely on the grounding transformer for the grounded path. There are two basic types of grounding transformers. Zigzag primary connected or Y-connected primary. Zigzag transformer contains six coils on three cores. The first coil on each core is connected counterwise to the second coil on the next core. The second coils are then all tied together to form a neutral, and the phases are connected to the primary coils. Each phase, therefore, couples with each other phase, and the voltages cancel out. Schematically, it looks like this. It's a symmetrical three-phase source. It's a typical Y-connected transformers a Y connection on a three phase line if you will. The vector diagram of this connection shows a balanced circuit with no current flowing in the neutral and equal voltage on all three phases. The zigzag connection has two windings on each leg as we previously mentioned. Each leg of the zigzag is connected to a winding from another one which is out, which is out of phase. The resulting connection looks like this. The resulting zigzag connection is phase shifted with respect to the incoming three phase source. This, is very this phase shift has the benefit of limiting the circulation of triplet harmonics, thirds, sixths, and ninths. Also, it can be used without a delta connected tertiary winding or a fiber -like core normally associated with core saturation caused by harmonic circulation. And the elimination of secondary windings also results in a smaller footprint typically a lower cost. Y-connected transformers includes either a delta or Y-connected secondaries. If it's a Y-connected secondary, it utilizes either a 4 or 5 ligand core, since there's no phase shift to eliminate the triplet harmonics in a straight Y connection. It adds the benefit though of a multifunctional application providing benefit of an auxiliary power for substation power when required. So how do we specify ground transformer? Well, first of all, you have to know the basic parameters, such as primary voltage, phase-to-phase -phase continuous primary current or rated KVA, continuous neutral current, the available fault current and its duration. Impedance has to be specified either as a percentage or as an ohms per phase value. 
primary winding connection choice of zigzag or Y connection, secondary connection if required, and basic overall construction. Let's look at each one of these in greater detail. Primary voltage. This is the system voltage to which the grounding winding is going to be connected. Don't forget to specify the BIL. In some cases, the BIL will be dictated by the equipment considerations, such as we see frequently with 150 kV BIL equipment on 34.5 wind farms because of the limitation of dead front connectors available. Newer, newer products are coming out today with higher BILs, but there's still a large installed base of 34.5 kV wind farms operating at 150 kV BIL because of the cable connections. Primary current. This is a transform must be sized to carry the rated continuous phase-to-phase -phase current without exceeding its temperature limit. This is a basic parameter of all transformer design. The higher the current, the larger and more costly the transformer. Typical values can be as low as 5 amps or as high as a few hundred. Include any auxiliary loading requirements if you have a white connected primary and you're providing a secondary load. The continuous neutral current. This is defined as three times the phase to phase current because it's zero sequence current and the neutral sees all three phases simultaneously. It is the value that is expected to flow in the neutral circuit without tripping protective circuits. This would be a continuous unbalanced neutral current that would flow in your system all the time. This is not a fault event, this is a continuous current. Choose to design the thermal capacity of the transformer. The fault current duration, on the other hand, is used to determine the short time heating resulting from a fault on the system which returns through the transformer. Typical ranges run from a few hundred amps to a few thousand amps. Duration is expressed in seconds and not cycles. A typical example would be 400 amps for 10 seconds. Impedance. Impedance can be expressed as either a percentage or as an ohmic value per phase. Either should be chosen such that the unfaulted phase voltages are within the temporary over voltage capability of the transformer and the associated equipment such as arrestors, terminal connectors, etc. Typical values for impedance can be as low as 8% or as much as 100%. Impedance must be determined by the system designer and the transformer manufacturers need to be advised at the time of order. Primary winding connection. It can be either zigzag or a grounded Y. Secondary connection. Specify the secondary voltage and connection for transformers that are primary Y connected. Remember this can be either a delta or a Y connection. Specify the size of the auxiliary loader to be connected if required. If you have a two winding transformer with no secondary load, it advises if the delta needs, winding needs to be brought out or if it can be buried. Oftentimes only one transform pushing is brought out for grounding to the tank or for testing later on. Construction features. What's your transformer going to look like? Is it going to be a compartmental pad mount or a unit substation type design? Do you need this application indoors or outdoors? What kind of fluid type do you need? Do you need mineral oil, silicone, or EnviroTemp FR3? Site elevation or environmental conditions. Is this a high fire or danger area? It's going to be a seismic rating, pollution rating, extreme heat. Connectivity. How are you going to trans hook this transformer to your system? Is it going to be a dead front or live front connection? Using spade terminals, cover mounted or sidewall bushings, exposed or enclosed bushings. Temperature rise. Ground transformers are seldom designed to carry a load, so temperature rise hardly, hardly becomes an issue. However, normally they're designed at 65 degrees. If you have a 55 degree rise transformer requirement, we can do that. 5565 is an unusual requirement for grounding transformers. Since there are no future loading requirements, it's not very frequent that you see an elevated KVA or an elevated rating for them. But special coding requirements, let us know. For more information and specification sheets, visit our website at www.pacificcresttrans.com. Thank you.